Bread and revolution, a toast to survival. Bread, a simple staple yet so powerful in its symbolism. The French Revolution, a time of upheaval, a time of change. The streets were filled with cries for liberty, equality and fraternity. And a time when bread became more than just food. It became a symbol of survival. Empty shelves and long lines at bread carts told the story of a nation in turmoil. The masses cried out for bread and roses, demanding not just sustenance but a better life. Bread was not just about filling stomachs, it was about dignity and hope. Bread, the staple of their diet, represented their struggle. It was a daily reminder of their fight for a better existence. Fast forward to the Victorian era, the Industrial Revolution was in full swing, factories rose and with them the working class. People flocked to cities for work. Bread, still essential, became a symbol of economic stability. The bustling markets were a testament to the era's rapid growth. A family's ability to afford bread often meant the difference between comfort and poverty. The sight of children peering into bakery windows was a poignant reminder of the disparities. The aroma of freshly baked bread filled the air, a constant reminder of both the basic necessity and the stark disparities of the time. Bakers worked tirelessly, their craft a lifeline for many. For some, it represented hope and sustenance. For others, it served as a bitter symbol of their struggle to survive. The divide between the haves and have-nots was stark. From the tumultuous streets of revolutionary France to the bustling cities of Victorian England, bread played a central role. It was a common thread in the fabric of society. It nourished bodies and fueled revolutions, becoming a potent symbol of the times. Bread was more than sustenance. It was a beacon of hope, a call to action, and a testament to the enduring human spirit. The weight of the loaf, defining the breadwinner. The term itself evokes images of sustenance and survival, a fundamental aspect of human life. The 1800s saw the rise of a new term, breadwinner. This era was marked by rapid industrialization and societal changes. This word, heavy with responsibility, referred to the person who provided for their family. It was a role that demanded hard work and sacrifice. Usually it was the man of the house, reflecting the societal norms of the time. Men were expected to be the primary earners, the pillars of their households. The breadwinner carried the weight of his family's well-being on his shoulders. His labor was the lifeline that kept his family afloat. His ability to put food on the table, to keep a roof over their heads, determined their fate. Every meal, every repaired roof was a testament to his dedication. It was a time when survival depended on a steady income. The breadwinner's role was crucial in an era where economic stability was hard to come by. The term breadwinner wasn't just a word, it encapsulated the essence of duty and perseverance. It was a way of life. The breadwinner's efforts were visible in every aspect of daily living, from the food on the table to the warmth of the home. It spoke to the challenges of the era, the struggle for economic stability. Jobs were scarce and every coin counted. It highlighted the burden and the honor of providing for one's family. The breadwinner's paycheck was more than money. It was a symbol of love and responsibility. This concept of the breadwinner, born out of necessity, would continue to shape families and societies for generations to come. It became a legacy passed down through the ages. It became a defining characteristic of manhood and a testament to the importance of providing for loved ones. The role of the breadwinner was not just about earning, it was about nurturing and protecting the family unit. I knew the weight of bad choices. Every decision, every wrong turn, it all led me to that cold, unforgiving cell. I'd spent years behind bars, paying the price for my mistakes. The days were long, the nights even longer, filled with regret and reflection. But prison, while harsh, had also been a crucible. It was a place where I was forced to confront my demons, to face the man I had become. It had forced me to confront my demons and discover a hidden talent, music. Music became my escape, my therapy, my way of expressing the pain and hope within me. Inside the concrete walls, Timmy poured his heart into writing lyrics. Each word was a piece of his soul, a reflection of his journey. He rapped about his experiences, his regrets and his hopes for redemption. His music was raw, real and resonated deeply with those who heard it. His words resonated with other inmates, offering a glimpse of hope in the darkness. They saw in him a possibility, a chance for change. When I was released, I was determined to use my music for good. I wanted to be a beacon of hope, 
to show others that change was possible. I had a vision to create a record label that would give other ex-convicts a second chance, a place where they could tell their stories, share their pain, and find redemption through music. I called it Second Chance Records, a testament to my own journey and my belief in redemption. It was more than just a label, it was a movement. Timmy knew the stigma attached to a criminal record. He had lived it, felt its weight, and understood the barriers it created. He was determined to break down those barriers, to show the world that even those who had stumbled deserved a chance to shine, to prove that with the right support and opportunities, anyone could turn their life around and make a positive impact on the world. Section 4, Patrick Starr, a constellation of talent is born. One day, a demo tape landed on Timmy's desk. It was raw, unpolished, but filled with raw talent. The artist called himself Patrick Starr, and his music was a unique blend of humor, social commentary, and catchy hooks. Timmy was impressed. He tracked down Patrick, who turned out to be a collective of three talented individuals. A charismatic rapper named Squidward, a beatboxing prodigy named Sandy, and a lyrical genius named Plankton. Together, they formed the group Patrick Star, a nod to their shared love for a certain cartoon starfish and their desire to create music that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. Their chemistry was undeniable, their energy infectious. Timmy knew he had stumbled upon something special. He signed Patrick Star to Second Chance Records, giving them a platform to share their unique sound with the world. Section 5, Fishboy Makes Waves Riding the Tides of Success. In 2023, Patrick Starr released their debut album, Fishboy. It was an instant hit. The album's lead single, Krabby Patty Anthem, became a viral sensation, topping the charts and introducing the world to their quirky brand of hip-hop. Fishboy was more than just a catchy album. It was a breath of fresh air in a genre often dominated by the same themes. Patrick Starr's music was fun, relatable, and surprisingly deep, tackling issues like social justice, self-acceptance, and the power of friendship. Critics praised their originality, their lyrical prowess, and their ability to connect with audiences from all walks of life. Fishboy became a cultural phenomenon, propelling Patrick Starr to stardom. The success of Fishboy proved that the world was ready for something different. It cemented Patrick Starr's place in the music industry and paved the way for their future endeavors.